Good morning everybody and welcome to Sunday Q&A on a Saturday. Uh, I've got a removal tomorrow morning. Uh, I've got to be in Soho at 7 o'clock. Which is, oh, I'm not really looking forward to it. But hey, it's kind of it's kind of a mate. So um, yeah, so we've got to do that removal and then we're over to Serban to pick up a sofa and then dropping off somewhere near Hatfield, which at least won't be far from home. Um, I had two pallets this morning, which was cool. Um, again, I've said to people about working on Saturdays before, and I was going to do a video about this, and then kind of it wasn't enough there to talk about really. The thing about Saturdays is there ain't a lot of jobs on a Saturday. You can get them, mainly airport jobs. Uh, be wise about the money you quote because there's a good chance you won't get a return load because there's probably only about a tenth of the jobs on a Saturday and Sunday on a bank holidays that you'd find on a normal day. But you can get them. And this one was a friend of mine, a guy I know very well. He rung me up and he's, he's no, no distance at all to pick up. Um, in fact, he works on the same site I do. And it was two pallets, one to High Wycombe and one to Milton Keynes. So we're talking about 80 miles in total. Um, you wanna, and I was done by 11 o'clock. So that's kind of cool. When I look back at the, you know, I stand on Holloway Road all day trying to take that sort of money. So very grateful. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, so Sunday Q&A on a Saturday. Sorry if it scares you. You don't have to watch it till tomorrow morning. If it brings up, watch it tomorrow. Anyway, right, what we got this week? Um, starting with Martin Claudio and... Um, yeah, a couple of questions here. Do you charge the same price per mile as you do for distance? You know, say if it's 20 miles, would you charge the same money as you charge for 150 miles? And there was another question, I haven't written your name down, I do beg your pardon, how do you price multi-drops? Right, there's a video on this. I've done this. Just scroll down, you'll find it. But just a quick one, obviously no, because if the job's only going three miles, you ain't going to charge them three quid, because you've still got the aggravation. A lot of aggravation on the jobs is finding the pickup point, getting it on board, and finding the delivery point and getting it off. Of a three hour job, the, the, the beginning and the end can take, can take an hour. You could do two, of a three hour job, you could spend two hours, you could you do an hour driving and two hours picking up and driving, so that doesn't make no sense. Um, uh, yeah, so you need a minimum charge, really. Um, and I recommend a minimum charge. Oh, we used to say minimum charge on a small van is £25, but we found a lot of people are doing jobs at 25 quid, and it just doesn't work out economically. It's not a good way for us to run ourselves. So um, we're trying to, yeah, I would say more, but that doesn't mean you're going to win it. The problem is a lot of people will quote the cheaper price. They're not doing themselves any favours, we don't think. Uh, one quick one also. There's a few jobs on there. You'll see them at the bottom. Multi-drops. And it'll be like, there's multi-drops and multi-drops. Where I, I do a multi drop that's about seven or eight drops in one hit, loaded seven or eight drops in one hit. That's a good multi drop. I get reasonably well. I get I get well paid for it. I'm happy. You get you'll get ones on there that are 70, 80, 90 drops and stuff like that. These are kind of your Amazon delivery things. These I personally think need to be avoided. Uh, sometimes they'll give you a set price for the day. I'm not saying you should do them. You shouldn't do them. But if you pick them up, I try it once. It might work out for you. But I thought the more drops you got, the more aggravation you've got. And at the end of the day, I find you end up doing like drops for like a pound, 90p. If you're lucky, two pound a drop. And it just it's just a pile of aggravation. You can't find the place. And then if it fails or if you drop it and then the customer complains, they can fine you. I think... I think it's a very hard way to work, personally. I'm not telling you again, you, as you know, with all this is just my opinion. I'm relatively new to this. Um, I, I, I welcome any feedback and I always pass it on. But personally, I think if a drop, if you get, if you, once you start getting past about more than 10 drops, it starts to get, you know, the price you get in relation to the amount of time and aggravation, I, I personally find it doesn't work out. But horses for courses on that score. Um, Oh, the other question from Martin Cloud, you, what is the jobs you sometimes, if they pick up now and deliver in three days' time? I don't find too many of those. I find a lot of them like picking up today and dropping off the next day, and that's kind of cool. If you're picking up in the evening, dropping off in the morning, that's lovely because you know you've got a job on. You can give, you can quote a little bit extra for overnight. If you've got storage or if it's a small van and it's just a package, you want to bring it in, keep it safe in your house, that's fine as long as you transport it safely. If you want to leave it in the van, that's fine. But then it depends on where you park your van and how much risk it is. I mean, we have a compound, we have an electronic gate and we have lock gates. We, we've done a proper... But, um, yeah, that, that, ours are safe, like, you know. But um, it depends on you on that score. Um, yeah, sort of... If it's three days, you've got to cost it. 
I mean, I've had ones where I've had to deliver the film sets where I've got to pick up at 10 o'clock in the morning and deliver the next day, early in the morning, um, and I've charged them like 250 quid for it because I said, the problem is I can get one job before I pick up and then that blocks my van for the whole day. And the price for a Luton van for a whole day, we put about 250 pounds. So, and in fairness, they were happy enough with that. They paid it, and they they asked to come back. So, it, it's you can negotiate with the shippers. They'll pay what they'll pay. They'll, they'll pay if they like you, and it depends how much money they've got on the job because obviously they can't sell it on to you if they haven't got enough dough. But it really is. It's another one of those negotiation things. I always say, quote the money that you're happy to do the job for. They'll say yes or no. Uh, but I mean, do be careful. I mean, we've had a few lately where we've had some very low quotes in. Uh, from our firm uh, but they basically were people on return jobs and uh, backloads and we have to educate them <laughs> you know guys even though you want the job there's there's cheap and there's silly cheap so yeah this is something I'm having to deal with uh, what else is going on out there um, yeah the hands free problem uh, Steve Davis he says there's no problem with the hands free because you can, you've got your plug in your ear thing. Oh, uh, Ray, thanks very much for the um, the text. He's got one that he said I should try some Plantronics thing. I might try it. I'm still happy with me plug in, but I might try it if it's any good. I'll let you know. Um, he said, but the problem is, and uh, it's fair enough. He said, what happens when it's text only? What if they're just online quotes only? And he, and he says, and you're sitting there, and the job pings up, and these jobs sell fast. So you're sitting there, maybe trying to work out how much money you've got a quote on the job and um, navigating around about and at the same time you're trying to do it on your and he says how many of us actually pull over stop think about it and quote it and it, in fairness he has he spotlighted a problem there which in the fact is obviously we all have to be safe we all have to be legal you, you're crazy if you're doing that thing you're 200 pound fine plus six points but at the same time if every time you pull over to a lay by you work it out you electronically quote it or go to it elect electronically quote it and it's just sold at what stage do you think this is costing me money now that is all down to your individual consciences how you play that one is up to you but he's dead right it is a problem in the fact that there's something in in the system where if you do it correctly you're kind of getting you're you're it's it, it's giving you a handicap I, I don't know the answer to it um i don't ever recommend that anybody takes chances on the road like i say you can hurt yourself you can hurt someone else you know about that lorry driver he ended up with 11 years so you guys you've got to be careful and you've got to be safe but it is a problem if you're going to be safe it can cost you money but I presume better that than the alternative line, you know. So, but yes, Steve, it's a very good point. Well made. Um, what have we got here? Barrack, back in Lima, and Panda Drone. What size van? Guys, again, there's a video on this. Now, the truth of the matter is, it's horses for courses. Some people love the small van, very economical, and if you're clever about it, you can make good money in a small van. Also, a lot of the jobs on the exchange are a small van, medium to long wheelbases. Uh, you don't get that many jobs for medium to long wheelbase, but if you do, if it's weight on a pallet, two pallets weighing 12, 13, 12, 1300 kilos, 1400 kilos, you can carry them on small, medium, wheel, uh, medium long wheelbases. Can't on a Luton, it's too heavy. Luton, you're looking at maybe a ton if you're lucky. Um, Luton to Luton with Curtin side, do any job you like. I'm a, I'm a Luton fan. I was born in Luton. <laughs> this is true. Um, but at the end of the day, it's horses for courses. There's a video that outlines it's better. I don't want to keep repeating myself on the Sundays, you know, so hopefully that'll fill you in. Again, just my opinion. At the end of the day, I'm, all I'm doing is what I say, the world the way I see it and sharing what you guys tell to me. But at the end of the day, choice is yours. Pay your money, take your choice, as Francis Rossi says. Good man. Uh, what we got here? Davey in Wonderland. Um, right, yeah, we're on the diesel thing. Right. The mix between supermarket... Da Davey says... Do the supermarket diesel. A lot of people are saying this. Do the supermarket diesel. Maybe once in a while put 20 quid in of the posh one or once every three tanks. I think uh, Ken said every three tanks put in a decent one. Um, Danny Richardson says Red X. I'm just going to tell you what everyone said. Oh, by the way, I did put that diesel stuff in. The little bottle. Hang on, we'll come to that. Uh, the big one I put in and I didn't get no engine warning lights. But it, where, is it doing anything? 
anyway we'll come to that as well uh danny richardson says red x once a month and he also says that at costco they use the same additives that they do at shell so maybe that's the way forward i've often thought about this costco thing because you can get coffee and cat food really cheap and there's one not too far from well i think they're building one in watford and there's one Oh, I can't even remember. Oh, no, they're building one in Stevenage. There is one in Watford. So I might think about the Costco thing. But then again, if I've got to drive to there to get the fuel, kind of doesn't really work out. Um, but if you've got a Costco near you, bing bong. Um, Lloyd J, he recommends Moly, M-O-L-Y, diesel injector cleaner. He says he puts it in once every two months. Well, that's attractive because it means you're not doing it all the time. And he says he's getting 530 miles per tank. I don't know what kind of van he's driving, but... Well done, you. Um, and he says it's a German brand with amazing reviews. So maybe something to check out online there, guys. Moly, diesel injector cleaner. Um, Howard Can, he says, um, the high-end diesel, you know, them Ultima diesels, the ones for if you've got a, a diesel sports car. Like um, He says they're basically the standard fuel plus a load of additional cleaners. So maybe that might be the way forward for you. You know, use your cheap diesel and then once every two or three, three or four fuelings, put in the ultimate one. It's going to cost you a few quid, but if it keeps your injectors clean, keeps you, you get more miles to gallon and it saves, saves your engine. It's got a bit of way forward, maybe. I don't know. You got, you pick your way. Um, yeah, that's another question I thought to myself. Now, I've got to check this one out myself, which is because we've got the fuel cards and I'm, on, we, I'm filling up with standard diesel, but I want to know if I fill up with the with a posh diesel we've got uk fuel cards and we've got bp fuel cards and if we fill up with the posh diesel will that charge me crazy money or will that charge me the same money as a standard diesel because if it's going to charge me the same money as a standard diesel i might as well just use the fuel card fill up with the super posh diesel that make you make your man go faster which it won't do um and then keep it clean so that's something i'm going to try and find out myself and if i if you know please tell me and otherwise i'll um once i've worked it out i'll get back to you uh what else we got here gary john baker again everyone sharing their experiences thanks very much he says he's been driving for 37 years. He's never used any additives and mainly used supermarket fuel. He says it's usually down to the way the fuel is stored and managed. He, and like, you know, sometimes when you go to the site, the tank is going to pour it in. Sometimes it's managed well. Sometimes it's managed badly. Now, I don't know that it's true, but I do know, and I did question it at the time, my mate Big Dave, um, he said he always had trouble when he filled up with a particular garage in London. And it's basically, it's um, it's an archway. It's a big one around about an archway. I'm not trying to rubbish the garage. I don't know if this is true. This is just Dave's opinion. And he said every time I put the motor in there and I put fuel in it, it you know, I had fan problems. And now I don't imagine that they're buying cheap diesel or bringing the diesel from anywhere. But there is the possibility that what Gary John Baker is, says is true. That if you find a garage where, but the, you know, if the fuel is stored badly, that's going to cause you the problems. Again, how do you find out? How do you actually, you know, but yeah, so, um, yeah, okay. Uh, Doza said that K2 bottle I've got is too small to do a DPF clean. So he said K2 are like, um, they do a lot of good car shiny products, but their engine products he, he doesn't recommend. So I haven't used it yet. I don't know what I'll do. I might just chuck it in and see what happens or just leave it. Use it on the car or something. Um, and C11 Yan, as usual, coming, you know, is always with the last word goes to you, my friend, hey, in which is he says, he says, the main ingredient in diesel injector cleaners is something called 2EHN. Google it. And there was some legislation about this. He said, if the sole market leader is 2EHN, he says, so basically anything that they sell you as a diesel injector cleaner is 2EHN with their label on the front of it. And so the question is, how much? Two each UHN is in the bowl, and he says there's one out there called Miller's Echo Max, that is 99% two EHN, and Ian, who does know his stuff as well, um, recommends that one. I think the problem is, at the end of the day, you've got no frame of reference. You're shoving this stuff in your van. You don't know if it's good or bad. If I buy the diesel from there, is it a good garage? Is it a bad garage? Is it stored correctly? If I do the posh diesel, is it actually charging me more money? Is it making any difference? The only way you can possibly look at it is how many miles a gallon you're getting out and then how much difference is it going to make? I think, 
you guys, you've got all the information there. You've had everybody else's advice and everybody else's four pennies. And thank you very much for contributing. Always appreciated. I think at the end of the day, you've got to choose. I will probably, I'm going to go and check out to see if I pay extra money for putting Ultima in. Because if I don't have to pay extra money for putting Ultima in, I'm just going to use Ultima. If not, I think personally, no disrespect to anybody, I'm going to go with that Miller's Echo Max because it's 99% of something that someone else has researched for me. Because I'm, well, I say I'm too damn lazy, but I'm always working. <laughs> I was delivering this morning. I'm delivering tomorrow. I'm delivering on Monday. I'm delivering. It's what I do. Anyway, that's it. Sunday's Q&A on a Saturday. Uh, sorry if it's put you out of bonk. Um, but in the meantime, hopefully you're back to normal next week. Might get, I had a weekend off over the bank holiday. That was kind of fine. So Anyway, and I've got the rest of the afternoon off. So I'm going to go and... No, it's too early to have a beer. Maybe do some beer on him. Okay, guys. That's it. Thanks for listening. Take care. Take money.